Now welcome to our hip bone. The coxal bone is going to be made of three separate bones that are actually all fused together. So right now the hip bone is held basically in anatomical position, we're tipped a little bit, okay? but the ilium is going to be the portion that's sitting at the superior side. And then as we follow down, the ischium is going to be the broader portion that's going to be on the posterior inferior side. And then the pubis is the part that's going to face forward um, and uh, make up the front part of our hips. So if we turn to the lateral side, what we can see is a spot where all three of these bones come together. This is called the acetabulum. This is actually the spot where the femur, our leg bone, is going to hit the hip and articulate forming our leg joint. So this is the kind of socket, I guess, for the um, head, of leg, the for the head of the humerus. Mm -hmm. right? okay, so now on the ilium, we can see from this side, which again, we are now looking at the lateral portion of the ilium. So the spot where Corrine's hand is right now is where the, the <laughs> where our sacrum is actually going to hit. So this is going to be that medial side of the, of the hip bone. So again, left and right is really important on this one. Get your hands on it so that you can figure that one out. So the first little bump we can see on the anterior portion is called the anterior inferior iliac spine. Nothing like a mouthful, mm -hmm. right? That's a long, that's a long one. <laughs> And then just above it is the anterior superior iliac spine. And yeah. as we follow the spine up and around, we hit the um, iliac fossa and the iliac crest. So the iliac fossa is going to be the flatter cupped-ish area, and then the crest will go along the top of the ilium and kind of go towards the posterior side, again, where that bumpy section is, and we'll follow it down to that big notch. You can see that notch is what we call the greater sciatic notch. The greater sciatic notch will follow down to our ischium, and the ischium is going to have one thing on it called the ischial tuberosity. It's really just the you know bottom of the ischium, basically. And as we follow the hip forward, we hit the pubic bone. And here is one thing you need to know, which is the pubic symphysis. Now this is technically the joint between the two hip bones that I'll show you a little more clearly on the skeleton in a moment. So now we'll move to our femur try to fit that into this extremely um, small space that we have here. Now the femur is going to be the longest bone in our body. It's pretty massive, which is why it doesn't fit into our beautiful view here. And right now we're looking at the femur from our anterior view. Okay, so from here we can see the head. Now the head's pretty distinct here on our femur. It's rather large. The head is going to be what articulates with the acetabulum on the hip. Now here on the anterior side, you can also see the large bump to the lateral side, which is the greater trochanter. So the greater trochanter is going to be on our lateral side. Now if we flip this puppy over, we can see another bump. This is our lesser trochanter. So you can still see the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter. And as we follow this down the posterior side, you can kind of see that there is a line present there. That line is called our linea aspera. The linea aspera is going to be another attachment point for a lot of muscles we'll talk about later on in the semester. And as we move down to our distal end of the femur, there are two big bumps. I remember bumps are condyles. So we have a medial condyle, which is going to be lined up with the head of a humerus, and the lateral, which is going to be lined up with our greater trochanter. So again, we're on the posterior view right now. So if we flip it over to the anterior view, you can see there's a nice flat spot between those two condyles. This is the spot where our patella is going to articulate. So the patella would be our kneecap, and that will articulate well there. So as we move to, walking slowly to Herman, we can see how the hips are going to fit with one another. So we can see the spot where the ischiums, or the, sorry, the iliacs are going to be touching the sacrum okay, at the posterior side. So the iliac right there is going, so the hip bones don't actually touch one another at all, really. They don't touch in the back or in the front. Now in the front, we have the pubic symphysis, which is going to be that cartilagey place where the two hip bones are going to be here in the, in the front. 
Now we can also see where we have an articulation of the femur and the hip bone here. So the big head of the femur is going to be able to move with the acetabulum. Now notice how much bigger the head is on the femur than it was up here on the humerus. Okay, so the humerus head is much smaller than that of the femur. And that gives us a lot more rotation of the shoulder than we have of the hip unless you are some kind of crazy circus dude, I guess. They have a lot of rotation. Hey, as long as we're here, let's take a quick look at the patella. All right, let's do that. So down here at the knee. Patella. Is the patella, which is held in by tendon and ligaments and surrounded by a lot of good ushy gushy stuff that we'll be looking at as we look at the knee joint. Sounds great. All right, All right and we're gonna move on down to the last part of the leg.